The Elite Amateur Golf Series is the coordination of seven of the most historic and highly esteemed amateur championships in the country. It's seven different tournaments with seven different organizations truly banding together to provide first class experiences for, for the players and, and their families. It was really a way to help organize those events, create a better schedule for the players, and have some incentives at the end of the season based on the points list. You can gain PGA Tour events, Corn Ferry Tour exemptions. The Elite Amateur Cup will be presented to the champion of the series. It's a points race. Players are keeping up with their point tallies, where they are ranked uh, going into each tournament. And you've seen players play from one, two events to five, six events throughout the country. I think it's created a lot of excitement through the amateur golf world. The Elite Amateur Series is a great opportunity for top amateur players to make their mark and help them progress onto professional golf. When you're younger, you kind of look up to events like these and you kind of strive to play in those. It's a really good thing for amateur golf. You just kind of focus on playing good golf in the Elite M Series events. I just think it's a great opportunity for golfers to improve and play in the bigger league and play in professional level in the next year. That's what most of us are inspiring to do. It's really been an amazing ride to get to where we are now and excited for year one and then where we're going to go into the future from now. There are probably four or five events that can really kind of classify themselves as majors, and I think this is one of them. It's probably everyone's favorite event of the year, just the atmosphere and everything. At one of Moisa, you never know what you're gonna get in terms of greens, because the pins will always be tucked on the corners. It's a lot of great players that uh, have won the Northeast Amateur and have walked on these fairways. It's the who's who of amateur golf and one of the top 10 tournaments in the world to play in. My name is Dylan Minetti. I'm from San Diego, California. Six on PJ Tour U, so that's really exciting because top five make Corn Ferry. I had a really good season last year, finally got two collegiate wins, then hoping to defend my championship here at Northeast. My dad played golf for quite a while, introduced me to the game. Last year he caddied for me here, so it was cool to have him on the bag to win. He's pretty much my swing coach and just looks at everything. He's kind of got a unique little golf swing and one that uh, I really haven't wanted to change, just kind of refined. Definitely don't get along all the time with my swing because I want to see something, he wants to see something else. There is times when he gets upset that he likes to take it out on me and after a certain point sometimes I can't handle it and I have my own little strong opinion so I might crack back at him a little bit. It's cool to kind of have that father-son interaction to try to get better. He likes me to kind of keep quiet. Unless he asks, I'm not gonna say much. But sometimes uh, when I see that he's kind of drifting a little bit, I'll like to just tell him to pick a line or focus on this shot. But it's been very fun watching him over the last 15 years. My dad's back again, so hopefully we can repeat. My only superstition is starting with a three-foot putt and making it. I know if I make it, obviously I'm gonna have a good day, and if I don't, I've got some grinding to do. My mindset on the first tee is to enjoy the moment and have a good time out there. It's not always about shooting a score, but beating yourself and getting better. Fear is definitely present in golf. When you're playing well, you don't think about fear. You're just trying to hit every green, every shot. And when you're going low, the fear is just gone in total sense that I'm aiming at every flag, and I know I'm gonna make every putt. It's an honor to be on Dylan's bag this week. I love being out there watching him grow as a young man and as a golfer. 
never had to ask him to get out there. He's the one that's created his own little dreams and where he wants to be at the end of the day. I just think that becoming number one in the world is always the dream and definitely win a couple of majors. I think the Masters would definitely be on the top of my list. Just the drive to get better, the drive to become number one just means so much to me because I want to do that and have those aspirations in the future. Defending champion with a new tournament record score of 19 under par, Dylan Minetti. I was kind of struggling these last three or four events in college and didn't really know where my mind was going, so now it kind of puts me on the right track and shows me my game's still good enough to be out here. As we set up the golf course for the play for the day, we go out with the green screw and we set the tees for the day, and then we will pick hole locations for the next day's round. And then as the weather and conditions change, then we'll adapt to that. Denver Country Club was opened in 1887 and has been a host of Transmiss Championships throughout its club's history. Probably not many players have the opportunity to play this course in their college events, so it's a new challenge for them, and most of them are probably getting to see it for the first time. Welcome to the 118th Trans-Mississippi Amateur Championship. This is the 1250 tee time. Now on the tee from Carlsbad, California, Luke Potter. I started playing the game when I was two, back in Wisconsin. My dad just kind of guided me along that path. Not much to do in the winter, so I did buy him some plastic clubs, and he would smack the little plastic balls around. When he started to really make contact with the ball, so at that point I said it was time to take him outside. Nice. What do you think about that? Give me a yeah. Well, the guy I took lessons from, Greg Casagranda, he would take nice. the last five, ten minutes of my lesson, and Greg would give him a little tip. Sure enough, those five-minute lessons became last ten minutes of the lesson, last thirty minutes of the lesson, and by the time he was five or six, he was taking all of the lessons, and uh, I was out of the picture. Compared to team sports, when you got to rely on other players, I like the individual aspect of the game. And you know, the only reason you're winning or losing is yourself. You know, every hole's different. You can really look back and tell a story about each hole. Golf is very similar to life. You get good breaks, bad breaks. There's always something you can be working on. Oh, look, that's so good. So fastest ball of the day, 175 ball speed. That one definitely tried to go a smidge lower. Luke's a little bit of an old school player, which is really fascinating to watch. He prefers things with a little bit of shape to him, ball flight. He's incredibly feel oriented when it comes to his golf game. I played with him in the US four ball and you could see his competitiveness. Competitive players are tough to beat and Luke's got a fire in him that's impressive. He's one of those competitors and uh, he's always kind of pushing you to get a little better. People will ask, how he stays so focused with golf, and I think it's something that's built inside of him. He can be on the practice range, or we can drop him off at the golf course, and he'll be practicing for, you know, four to six hours. Even after he's played in a tournament, if he didn't play as well as he liked, he'll stick around and keep practicing. If you go into a tournament not really confident about your game and not expecting to win, things might not go great for you. If you don't have your A game, you gotta really dig in and try and grind it out, focus on every shot. 
This is more of a validation for me to prove to myself that my game can travel and I can play and hang with the best of the best. It's truly what you want in the game of golf, just to know that you're improving each and every day, and uh, it means a lot. Watching him grow from an elite junior golfer to now going to ASU next year and, and obviously going to be an elite amateur and college player has been really fun. Just trying to take this game to the next level, eventually be on TV playing with the pros. That's what every guy in this field has wanted to do, so to be able to test your game against the guys you're probably going to be playing with on a professional level, that's about as good as anything you want to kind of make sure you're on that right path. Southern Amateur Championship has been around since 1902. It has one of the longest histories of all the amateur golf championships in the world. We are a event that moves around year to year from 15 states, and this year we're in Georgia at Sea Island. Sea Island Golf Club is a iconic location. It's home to PGA Tour events, and this is the first major men's event at the amateur level that is going to be competed on the plantation course. The players that are in our event, you know, such as Palmer Jackson, I mean, these guys, they're, you're going to see them on TV. They are the future of the game, and we are excited to have our place in the game to prepare them for the next level of professional golf. My name is Palmer Jackson. I'm from Murraysville, Pennsylvania, and I'm 21 years old. I, the only thing I remember about this hole is like when they put the pin way in the back. We're halfway through the Elite Amateur Series. We're heading into the Southern Amateur. The conditions are really good. The field is strong. So in order to win, you're going to have to play pretty well. Did you guys lay up? How far did you have, like 310? I started playing golf when I was three or four years old. My first tournament when I was six years old, it was a US Kids tournament in Pittsburgh. What intrigues me about golf is that you never feel satisfied. You're always out there to get better. No matter what you shoot, no matter how you're playing, it's a game that you can never perfect. I know Palmer Jackson a little bit. I played with him last year. He goes to Notre Dame, puts a lot of work in, and really nice guy. Palmer Jackson is, he's one of the nicest guys I've ever met. Ben, have you played here like a bunch of times? Yeah, probably. Years How are you? Palmer. Good yeah, you. great to see you. It's saying it was 260 to that bunker. The grass is so healthy, I don't even know if you can get a bad lie. The Southern Amateur is a special event. It's always pretty hot, and the scores are typically pretty low. In order to play well, you've got to be doing things well, and at that time of year, guys are pretty much on a roll. So if you're going to compete, you've got to be on top of your game. Typically in practice rounds, I try to focus most of my attention on sight lines off the tee and where I want to leave the ball around the greens. In my yardage book, I write down where the ridges are on the greens. I feel like if you can learn a golf course from the hole backwards to the tee, you're going to be in pretty good shape for the week. One of my main focal points every tournament is to stay very level-headed and control my emotions. I truly believe in stroke play that the best players aren't reacting. The best players are controlling their emotions and just playing the shot at hand. I'm thinking to myself on the tee like, this might be a three wood if, if I can really hit this into the water up there. I was named after Arnold Palmer, so he's certainly an idol for me. My dreams in golf don't really have an end. I obviously want to be a major champion. I want to be one of the greatest players to ever play the game. Now on the tee from Birmingham, Alabama, Gordon Sargent. Gordon Sargent is one of the hottest young players right now. He first played with him at Inverness in the U.S. Junior, and I could tell even though he was younger, he was going to be a special player. 
Goran Sargent's one of the best players. I mean, he won the national championship individual title this year. He's a great guy. I started golf when I was really young. My dad played a lot, so he would take me out to the course, and I really fell in love with the game, but kind of played some other sports. Starting in seventh grade, decided to kind of play only golf and put the other sports in the rearview mirror. Golf is definitely a grind. I remember last summer playing like high school golf and then the summer golf and then transitioning straight to college golf. It definitely wears you out. This summer, I feel like picked a few events to take off and relax a little bit. Amateur events are mainly college golfers, but now being able to associate myself as a college golfer and I know all the guys in the field, it's pretty cool. Swing speed is just insanely fast and he kills the ball. I've played with Gordon, I know he bombs it. He hits it a long way and his short game's really impressive. People say I hit it pretty far, so one thing I worked on this year in college is just kind of getting the ball in play and not, not forcing it too much. Around the greens, I think I'm pretty good. I rely on my chipping and putting a decent amount, and when those are on, I feel like I'm playing pretty good. I think everyone feels pressure. If you see it as a good thing, I think it can benefit you, just because like pressure means that you're doing something that's like important to you. Like Tiger said, you see pressure as a privilege, just kind of use it to your advantage. My dream is to play on the PGA Tour, so hopefully after college, this group of guys that play at amateur events now are, are those group of guys on the PGA Tour. The Elite Amateur Series is a pretty big deal when it comes to amateur golf. It's gonna bring the best players together and you don't have to pick and choose what events you wanna play. The seven Elite Am Series events are the ones that you kinda of look at and you circle on your calendar. So being able to play those and then the rewards that come with it is really special. And the Western Amateur Championship is the third oldest amateur event in the world. You know, the list of past champions speaks for itself. Tiger Woods, Jack Nicklaus, Justin Leonard can make the argument that it's the deepest field and certainly the most grueling test in the amateur game. Exmoor is a great golf course. It's going to reward someone who is the most prepared and the most confident in their game. Rough's up and the greens are going to be extremely firm and fast, so fairways are of the premium. There's definitely some spots you can get yourself in trouble if you're out of position. Western Am, one of the biggest tournaments of the year. Last year I missed the cut by one. This year I'm definitely looking to make my mark out there. Being able to compete for such a prestigious tournament is really cool, and this is one of the tournaments that everyone looks at and wants to play. It's a difficult event to play well in, but when you do, it's extremely rewarding. I'm Scott Crawl. We're at Willow Hill Golf Club, just north of Chicago. We've got the best amateur golfers in the country here this week. They're playing the Western Am. We're here getting them back on track and reaffirming that the fit is good. Another order, Rob. Right-handed, TSR3, head only. I'm Rob Burbick, and I'm a PGA Tour tech representative for Titleist. Tour vans have followed around the professional tours for about 30 years. It's a bit of a legend where not everybody gets to see inside. All your favorite players have stepped in here and gotten their work done. Yep. So it's a good little uh, reward for all the hard work you put in. <laughs> Titleist is lucky enough to bring their truck, and this is awesome. It's what any kid wants, and it's like Christmas. I'm pretty excited, uh, kind of like Christmas for uh, for us as elite players. Working with Garrett Rank on uh, on a new TSR driver, trying to maximize his uh, his distance, get him a little a little more consistency there with the new TSR. We went up a couple degrees uh, for loft in comparison to my old driver. Kept the ball in the air a little longer, got a, a couple more yards carry. Is that Can't a, beat that, right? Get into a new driver and then use it right away. Is that I'll, I'll be putting the driver in the bag this week for sure, yeah. Now on the tee from Ontario, Canada, Garrett Rank. Please welcome. Over the years, I've kind of learned that nobody really cares if you finish first or 40th, so really the only pressure for me is the, the pressure that I put on myself. I kind of deal with it during the wintertime as an NHL hockey official. 
It's a big time grind. I um, spend a lot of time on the road during the hockey season and it's a lot of time away from home from family and friends and you know you're grinding it's it's tough. I'm very hard on myself in terms of wanting to achieve success and play well and get the results but there's a little bit of ease with the career that I have not really putting the pressure on myself to make a living playing golf. I've uh, dealt with some adversity in my life, so I used to run a little bit hot on the golf course, but now I'm um, just kind of dealing with those things and having a better outlook on life. Kind of always laugh and, and look back and say that I'm out here on vacation, so if I'm not having fun or not enjoying myself out there, I probably uh, should find something else to do. Exmoor is in Highland Park, Illinois. It's on the North Shore of Chicago. Um, the North Shore of Chicago has some of the best golf in the whole country. It's hosting the Western Amateur this year. I was very fortunate to have a great week and win in 2019, and it's definitely the gold stamp on my golfing resume and a tournament I look forward to playing every year. They don't make these places easy. Greens are rolling really fast, pins are tricky, rough's long. Um, so sometimes it is a grind if you're not playing great to, uh, you know, get it in around par and you kind of embrace it. That's why you're here. You enjoy doing it and kind of just pretend that you're playing at your home course back home and try and get the ball in the hole as fast as you can. We had conversations for years about how we could work better together as organizations. Sometimes elite players would have to choose one tournament over another or dates would conflict. And we just said, you know, what could it be better? And it's hard to believe that two and a half years since those first conversations to where we are today. We believed in what could be accomplished and the good it could do for the amateur game. In year one, we're incredibly pleased with, with how things have gone this far, and we're certainly going to you know, improve in future years. We're constantly gathering feedback from, from players, coaches, and their families on, on how things are going and how we can look to make it bigger and better in 2023. We really believe in the players and the opportunities to give them to play in our events. We understand that not everybody comes from means, and we have a concerted effort to provide funding for players that need it to be able to participate. We don't want financial restrictions to be a barrier for those players. The players that are in our event, they've got the brightest futures ahead of them, and we can send them on as alumni and be proud of where they go down the road knowing that you know, we had a small part in preparing them for the next level.